Hello, my name is Vesa Juvonen, and in this video we will have a look how to build connected app parts using SignalR. We can use the example what is available from the SignalR site uh, or pages, uh, which is uh, and the information related on the SignalR is available from the www.asp.net slash SignalR. So what I've taken, uh, what I've used within the example is essentially the tutorial code related on SignalR and converted that to be used with the SharePoint app parts to enable communication between the app parts uh, in the SharePoint world. So let's have a look on the on the example. So this is the starting page uh, when you run the example using a file from the Visual Studio, and it just gives some additional details how to actually set things up and, and what do you need to do. The actual functionalities is part of the app parts. So let's move on the on the host page, uh, and after the app has been installed, uh, the app is actually adding two different app parts uh, to demonstrate the communications between the app parts. Uh, so let's add those app parts on the page. You can build the connectivity between the app parts using, well, basically two different options. Uh, you either use the client-side route, where you uh, do the communications between the app parts uh, as a communications between the iframes. Um, and you can actually make it happen. Uh, the only downside of that option is that you need to uh, include the JavaScript messaging routing on the host page. So you have to include either a script part or a JavaScript on the master page or somewhere in the page to work as the, as the routing factor between the app parts. And that's not necessarily an optimal thing. Uh, and that's why this um, signal R route, where we actually do the connectivity between the provider hosted app server side, might be a better option because you don't need to do any modifications on the SharePoint side. So therefore, the communications will work uh, regardless if the host web has been modified or how the host web, host web has been modified. So what I'm doing here is that I'm adding those two different uh, app ports on the page. They're actually pretty similar and they've taken from that tutorial um, and they're using, well, basically the tutorial code uh, as such, uh, but they have slightly different UI, so just to differentiate those uh, connected part one and the connected part two. Um, just to show that they actually uh, communicate between each other using a specific and a different uh, messaging uh, messages. So now let's actually have a look on that. So let's save, save the page. Uh, we have the connected part uh, one and the connected part two. Those are those app parts which we just added in. Um, and as mentioned, the app parts, well, the app parts are essentially iframes in stereos. Uh, that's one way of, of putting an app part, uh, which means that the app part it's, itself is actually loading from a different URL. So we are right now, we're in the address of uh, vesaj at sharepoint.com slash dev slash site basis and dev and home. But if you have a look on the properties of the app part, uh, we're able to actually see that the app part URL is something else because it's coming from the provider hosted application. So it is essentially an iframe, uh, and that's what it means is that by default, the iframes cannot talk between each other unless they actually, we do some routing uh, on the host web. That's related on the client side routing. But now with the server side implementation, we don't actually need to do any modification on the SharePoint side. So we're able to make these app parts to talk between each other just using the routing on the server side in the provider hosted app. So let's do uh, a, a message from the app part one to the app part two. Uh, and we're able to communicate between these app parts. And as you see, immediately when I click the send, we're able to see the result on the app part two, uh, which is that the part one is saying uh, hello there. And we're able to then obviously respond back. So we're able to say something, whatever, and this essentially the whole routing and the traffic uh, works through the server side uh, code. So I'm able to now spend on send messages between the parts one and two without any changes within the SharePoint side, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, let's move on to the Visual Studio side uh, and have a quick look on, on how we actually have implemented this. Uh, the whole code and, and the, whatever has to be done is actually shown uh, in the SignalR tutorial, but let's have a quick look on our solution. So within the solution, this is a typical uh, SharePoint provider hosted application. We have the app part, 
uh, which is over there, uh, which is essentially uh, deploying those uh, to those two different uh, app pods to the host web, which are then pointing to the pages within the provider hosted application. If we slightly scroll down, on the provider hosted application side, we're able to see that we have three pages. So we have the connected part one and the connected part two. Those are the individual parts or the content which is shown within inside of the iframe. And then the default ASPX, that was the starting point when we started the, the, the functionality. What we have added here is two server-side routings, uh, which are then accessed uh, by these uh, individual connected uh, parts. So let's actually scroll down slightly on the connected part one, uh, one example. And from here, we are able to see uh, the needed, for example, the Signar R uh, JavaScript, which is essentially needed for the server-side communications or, well, to enable the Signal R capability. Um, the, what's specific for this particular example is two specific functions uh, in our uh, JavaScript function. So we have a chat.client.broadcast message, uh, which has a name and message uh, parameters, uh, which is the one which is essentially getting the messages from the other web parts or app parts. Um, and then we have the, the other function, which is the chat.server.send, where we actually send the message from this particular uh, a part to the other parts which has been registered to the server side hub. And we have actually the corresponding code for those in the server side. So let's actually split the code um, and have a look on that one. Uh, so right now we're able to see side by side, we have the send option, the send code where we essentially have a two method, we have the name, we have the message, and we are essentially broadcasting that to all the registered clients and the corresponding uh, lines within the JavaScript are in here. So the chat server sent, and that's then broadcasted, uh, or sent to the server side, and then the server side is doing just simply, it just redirects or sends the same messages to all uh, registered client. We could do some uh, filtering uh, based on session, based on tenants, based on whatever we want. Um, so we don't obviously need to sent the whole message to all of the clients, but this is a really simple getting started demo. Uh, so the messages are essentially sent to all of the clients and then within the client side JavaScript or in the client side, we have that chat client broadcast message function name. And so this is essentially again, matching the that line on the server side. Uh, and we're getting the messages back from the server side for manipulation. I already kind of mentioned something which is pretty in, um, important to realize. So within here, in, the, in this session, we don't, within this demo, we don't have any session uh, filtering, any, any tenant filtering, which means that actually all of the app part instances uh, will get these messages, which are running and connecting to the provider hosted application, which is actually pretty cool. So let's have an example on that one. Uh, it shows the power of, uh, power of, uh, a part. So let's move on to, on the developer side one more time. Uh, and what I've done here is that I created uh, earlier uh, a two different pages. So I have a page one uh, where I have at the connected web part uh, one. So one of the web parts. And then uh, within another browser, let's actually do this uh, one by one. So I'm going to move this other browser uh, on the side. Uh, we have the connected part two. So the connectivity, when we build to connectivity, if we don't do any filtering in sessions or in filtering in tenants or in, in whatever we want to do, we can actually talk between different sessions and, and computers and uh, processes. So in this case, I have a normal browser on the left side, which is a normal session from Visual Studio. And on the right side, I have an in private session. So from a SharePoint perspective, completely different process, completely different client, completely different uh, authentication scheme. Uh, but due to the fact how the signal R is implemented, I'm able to actually make these two fellows to talk between each other. So this could be comp in completely different computers as well. Uh, so the whole story still works. So I can actually do hello and uh, at the same time that the other fellow, because it's registered on the same server side hub, it is actually getting that messages. And then the other fellow can actually respond back uh, to the left side uh, browser. Well, hello there as well.
and there we go we have a message is running across this obviously this is not precisely what you might be thinking as a connected report and that's where the filtering of the messages based on the sessions and and authentication users and and pages and the ASPX uh, actually comes to play but this is an interesting option uh, which with the signal R which is giving us further options and further scenarios which we can actually implement as part of our provider hosted application let's move back on the on the front page and so this is the typical uh, thing so that was more more about the different capabilities with signal r but with the app parts connectivity within a single page we would actually do some filtering based on the session id and we would just bypass the messages between these two individual instances within this particular aspx page so we wouldn't have uh, all of these instances of, of the app parts getting those messages in. But pretty cool stuff uh, with the Signal R and extremely easily doable. This implementation of this sample was extremely fast and, and please go to asp.net slash Signal R to get additional information about the, the server side message brokering uh, with the Signal R implementation. Thanks for your time.